Hi everyone, this is Adriana and Caitlin here. Welcome back to another episode of our Heart to Heart Astrology Podcast, episode number five. And mm -hmm. if you watched our previous video, you'll see we're in the same clothes because we're recording this the same day because <laughs> there was a lot to share about this whole month of May. So last time I talked about Pluto retrograde and this time, so coming around this full moon in Sagittarius, May 23rd, Pluto retrograde is going to be making a trine to the full moon. So what does this mean? So the greatest impact I feel for this is going to be most likely on the date of the full moon, but you can definitely feel the energy before and after, as I always say. Um, I'll also be I'll also be doing a video for you guys. I always try to do a horoscope, full moon horoscope video on this channel. So if you want to see how it's going to be generally impacting your zodiac sign, you can look out for that on this channel too. Um, but this is going to be illuminating things from the darkness, just like I was talking about previously. But it's really coming to a head here with the full moon. So all those things we were talking about in that last video, when the full moon comes around, it's like really shining a light on it. Like a big spotlight is oh, going no. on this here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yes, this can mean endings, but will bring a rebirth as it moves through its cycle uh, till the next new moon in June. So at the same time that Pluto is making this trine to the full moon, it's also working harmoniously with an aspect called a sextile to the sun in Gemini. So this can really spice things up with the talkative and intellectual Gemini energy. So personally, be mindful of your words and trying to think a little bit more before you speak to avoid miscommunication. <laughs> I know I am sometimes have to watch for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. Yeah. I always think, too, I'm like, if only we can just have telepathy, because then I feel like I could actually communicate what I want to say. <laughs> That's the uh, Aquarius <laughs> stellium in me. <laughs> when we have telepathy, we need filters, though, for sure. Well, with filters, yeah. If I could, like, turn it on and off. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. This is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that's also why I really like writing too which is a nice part of astrology that I really like too but anyways uh this can actually be a great time for research and exploring new topics uh, on a collective level we can see a lot of things revealed as I was talking about previous in our previous video again the full moon is really going to bring this up um you're, you're going to see more of this around this time uh, things revealed through uh, media, social media, internet, online, uh, things that were swept under the rug or cover up. So be on the lookout for those things. So that's a little bit of predictive astrology on my part there that I am feeling. Um, and as Caitlin will soon discuss, uh, discernment, I think that's one of the key words here, discernment is going to be key. It will be mm -hmm. key here, discernment. So using our discernment and our better judgment here, trusting your intuition with things, um, with this, yeah, Venus and Jupiter conjunction, uh, being an earthly Taurus will actually help to kind of ground and stabilize things so it doesn't completely go off the handle here. So I think that's the good thing with all that earthy energy that's happening, um, which I'm going to quickly share. There is, we have our earthy Taurus signs helping to ground that energy here with this full moon and Sagittarius. And we have the Pleiades here, which Caitlin will soon talk about as well, um, bringing in some really nice uh, divine feminine energy. Um, so yeah, so that's really helping to ground things. So the mass, speaking of energy, the masculine energy from Altair will be flying in to help assist the feminine energy of the Pleiades, particularly with fixed star Electra, so, which is part of the sextile here to Venus and uh, Jupiter here as well. So 
that's all I had to share on that. Um, I know we have another important date coming up on May 25th that, Caitlin, if you want to go ahead and talk about what's going on there. Absolutely, for sure. Well, we have um, the planet Jupiter entering the astrological sign of Gemini, and it's going to be around 7.15 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on May 25th. Um, and it's going to remain in Gemini till early June of 2025. Uh, so we've had uh, benefit with having Jupiter in Taurus. There's no doubt. It's, it's a good fit, I feel. Uh, it's a better fit than what we're heading into. Uh, Jupiter really doesn't like to be in Gemini. Um, and a lot of different reasons. Um, but, but, it, but it's going to bring luck to whatever zodiac sign it's in. So if you have Gemini in your sun, moon, or uh, rising, uh, you should have some good energies expanding. Um, but when the zodiac sign of Gemini is with uh, Jupiter, it's things are really going to go up in the air and then get bigger and bigger. Um, so we have to really watch out for tendency of becoming ungrounded. And when we get ungrounded, we literally, I feel, we go right into 4D consciousness. And this is what my guides call the crazy cosmic highway. And you never know who or what you're going to meet up there when you leave your body, <laughs> especially with Pluto also in another air sign of Aquarius. So big time to watch out for distractions. You had mentioned discernment. That's another big D word, but distractions is mm. huge right here. Um, and Jupiter in Gemini, the energy likes to jump around from idea to idea to idea to idea. And there will be many ideas as we progress through 2024. Um, so we have to be aware that as we shift from a very grounded Earth sign, like Taurus, the builder, in Jupiter to a very airy, all in my head Gemini, the curious intellectual in Jupiter, you may experience many twists and turns on your path forward this year. So you could kind of think of Jupiter in Gemini like a GPS that is wired to get you there on the fastest route. But don't forget to stop and smell the roses, to enjoy your journey. Um, and feel your path, big word, feel your path in your heart, not just your head. Um, when I saw the this year coming up, I uh, was looking at it actually towards the beginning of last uh, 2023. I'm like, wow, this is going to be a fiery, airy year um, where a lot is going to be more mental based. And we just don't want to get disconnected from our heart energies. Our heart energies are what make us as humans so special. I mean, this is this is something that um, we're not a robot. We're human. And, and that's something special. We forget about that. We think, oh, and especially when you get into the star seed, galactic, everything, it's like, oh, I'm an Andromedan or oh, I'm this. And it's like, well, we're, we're a human right now right now in this moment and to embrace our earthiness and our humanness and learn what it is to be human. If we skip that step, we're missing a very important step and we're missing what our strength is. In the last video, I talked about our soul strengths and one of our soul strengths is absolutely our heart and our compassion, okay? Um, so that's something to really, really think about. Um, Gemini can be a lot of fun, though. There can be a lot more partying and having fun. And Gemini could be the trickster and making jokes. And so it's not all bad by any means. But I just feel we're going to feel a difference. And we'll, I'm sure we'll be talking about this more than just this video because it's going to be here till June 2025. And it's going to be affecting all of us. So there's another alignment on uh, May 25th, and uh, Adri just talked a little bit about, and we have Jupiter conjunct the fixed stars in the constellation of Pleiades. And there's a lot of tight orbs there. Um, and she mentioned Electra, 
and I do plan to talk about Electra because uh, myself, my daughter, we both have uh, major connections to Electra. So I have some personal input with that. But Maya, um, which is associated with May Day, May 1st, Maya actually in the Pleiades is a 0, 0.00. I mean, it doesn't get much tighter than that with that orb connection. <laughs> it was kind of like, whoa. So, but Electra is where I'd like to talk about, and then Adrian and I can just discuss some of this and our opinions around it. Um, I got the story about Electra from my guides, and then I was able to confirm it with somebody else on the internet. This was quite a few years ago that had a very similar story. Um, and it was very confirming and, and very heartening to hear that this was confirmed. But let me just talk a little bit generally about the story. Um, first off, Electra is part of, again, the uh, Pleiades, which are the seven sisters. She was one of the most beautiful of the seven sisters of the Pleiades constellation. And her story very much reminds me of the Persephone story in Greek mythology. So again, back to Pluto, we talked about in the last video. Um, Pluto plays that role very often of uh, taking innocence away and bringing us into very deep, dark places. So the Electra priestesses were very Artemis-like individuals. They were not only beautiful, they were also innocent, curious, childlike explorers, adventurous, impulsive, open-hearted, passionate, creative, and fearless. And a lot of the Pleiadian connections uh, with all those fixed stars take place in Gemini. So if you have a lot of Gemini in your chart, more than likely you're going to have these fixed stars in your chart as well, especially as conjunctions. Um, but light was their life. It was all they knew. They knew nothing of the dark. So one day the dark, the dark showed up in the disguise of light. Of course, attracted by the Electra priestess's pure light, the fallen Anunnaki Syrian gods, and I like to call them with the little G. <laughs> I'm sorry, I get, I get kind of mad here, but think about some of these galactic gods with the little G, used their black magic to control the priestesses. This was the Electra priestess's first experience of victim and poverty consciousness. The first time they had only ever experienced prosperity consciousness. So the priestess's awareness fell to a lower frequency having lost their innocence and were being vampired of their psychic abilities. So Electra spends 450 years in the galactic nights and 2000 years in the ray of the photon belt. Electra's return to the photon belt brought back the light of the divine feminine, awakening them to what had happened. The Electra priestesses had learned the power of discernment. Discernment is the ability to understand or know something through the power of spirit. And I call this, what is for the highest good? The Electra priestesses are like an inner archetype, which awakens within us to what are deception energies. What is being hidden in the dark? This can be externally, but also internally. And healing may take place through shining the full light of the moon into the dark of the night through the power of loving discernment. So what is for the highest good? You can't go wrong with that question in any situation in your life. Um, that is how you can find discernment right there. That was a really nice story. You know, it's a good lesson of mm -hmm. using discernment because it, it is, it's really so important when, especially when you are on a spiritual path too, that's something that I've learned personally too. You have to use discernment with things like that. Um, and that 
Um, that story you shared too, really beautiful uh, in relation to the Pleiades. It also reminds me of, and I'm sure it parallels to this, the, um, you know, the story of the Garden of Eden and how we fell. That, yeah. that was how we fell, you know, the, the snake yeah. tempting, you know, Eve and all of that too. I mean, there, there's so many variations of that story anyways. Um, totally. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Persephone, Persephone and Hades. And yes, they're all the same type of story. And, uh, but I feel this one, because I, this is in my chart pretty intensely, my daughter's chart as well. I feel it, it just, it, it's the one that's the most connected for myself and my, my energetic genetics. Mm. <laughs> so, and, energetic uh, genetics. I like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just interesting, you know, this kind of like not having ever experienced victim or poverty consciousness. Well, when we come mm. into this lifetime and this 3d experience, every single one of us is going to experience that. So many of us that may have had these Electra connections and other Pleiadian connections and many different star connections for that matter, uh, may have chose to come in here so that we experience that and understand it fully. And then when we truly understand something and we fully process it and we learn it, we what we do is we integrate it. And then the light, it carries the dark. And the dark is light, okay? Whereas in this situation, it was very black and white. It was very extreme, extreme. Mm, yeah. So we have to look for those extreme places within us. Where are we very uh, dark connected or light connected overly, overly? Because um, nobody's perfect. Nobody a lot of we can get into this spiritual uh, narcissism. You know, people go to get into spirituality and they think, you know, my poop doesn't stink. Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> everybody's poop stinks <laughs> <laughs> because it's you know our waste. It's what we're Life? getting. Rid of. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and and if people don't get rid of it, it's like you're holding on to it. That's constipation. You're holding on to something. <laughs> I, you know, you're slowing down the process. You're holding on and you're not letting it process and go through the natural flow. And in healing work, in really good healing work, which I've done for 27 years with people, gotten in the trenches and helped people through many, many different stories, many different patterns, and uh, a really good healing work. At the end of the session, the person says, can I please use your bathroom? <laughs> because <laughs> <Really? laughs> our body then processes out because mm -hmm. we work spiritually, emotionally, mentally, yeah. and then it ends up physically. It's like okay? crying and too when you have to cry. Yeah, you got to let it out. Yeah, It's a huge detox. It's yeah. a huge detox. So the more we hold on to things, um, it's going to eventually have to come out. And and then it can be extremely painful when it comes out. Like we you know. talked in our in our last video too about healing. Yes. It is it's a process. It's it's an ongoing process. I think I, I don't know if you ever can be truly healed or self-actualized. <laughs> Very rarely does that ever happen, you know. If it does, you're out of here. You're you won't, <laughs> you're, you won't be here. You'll okay. you'll transcend, you'll ascend yeah. and you'll transition. Yeah. Um, you know, this is the way I, at least what I believe. If we mm -hmm. have attained, there, there isn't anybody to my knowledge and my experience and what I believe in that is perfect living on this right. planet. And I um, think that's really so important people, for people. Oh, yeah, sorry. There's people who've been enlightened, okay, and, and are having enlightening experiences. Right. Uh, like our Tolle, I could think of a few people that have amazing but are they perfect? And they won't, they'll never say they are, okay? Because they, they know it's impossible. We are perfectly imperfect. We could look at it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I More just think that's so important for people to understand when they're on a spiritual path, you know, if there's, especially if they're 
you know, if, if you are somebody new to spirituality in, in whatever way that might be, I think it's just so important for you to know that you do not have to be this perfectly carved okay. out, you know, yeah. whatever healed person. It's you, yep. it's always, always an ongoing process. So yeah. Well, the the the, fo the folks that I've worked with for so many many years, mm -hmm. so many are. <laughs> when we get caught up in the martyr consciousness, um, they won't come for a healing, because they're a martyr. <laughs> they're going to just keep carrying the pain. Mm. That's what martyr does. Yeah. Instead of really seeking help, and it's this fear of not being perfect is hugely connected to that. So when a person can get past that get past the martyrdom, you become what I call the down-to-earth angel. And a down-to-earth angel is completely different, very grounded, uh, very purposeful in healing themselves and then helping others to heal. Because many people in this spiritual realm can very often try to help others, but they haven't helped themselves. It's impossible. It's like, the only people who find me or who I've worked with for years um, are, peop are people that have issues like myself and, and I'm working on myself. And then, then I could maybe they'll walk through my door 20 seconds later and I figured something out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm prepared. I'm like a fly by the seat of your pants guru or something yeah. because, <laughs> because I just learned it 20 seconds ago and wham, I have exactly what they need to hear. And I pass that forward. And, but it's up to them to do what they will with it. You yeah. start learning, you can't force anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, you can lead a horse to water, you can't make them drink. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's up to them where they, what they do with it. But mm -hmm. bottom line, we are all, we have the capabilities of being your own inner guru, your own inner healer. And um, there's people like us along the way that can help be guides, uh, facilitators, uh, help, you know, helping on the way, but we don't have a magic wand. Nobody okay. does. That's, so. and that's the same too, with my readings that I do, I'm, you know, here to give you the guidance and to help mm -hmm. you. And it's, and what I tell people too, you know, my clients that I get, and I tell them too, this is stuff you already know. It's in your subconscious. I'm just pulling it out and yeah, showing exactly. it to you. So exactly. you do with it what you will, because we have free will and totally. Yeah. And you do with Absolutely. it. Yeah. However you see fit. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. For sharing that. If, sure. if you had if anything else you wanted to add before I do my well, article. I'm excited to yeah see the Oracle card. I loved our cards from last time. Let's see what comes up now. <laughs> Yeah, so this time I'm going to do an oracle message. So I'm going to use this Oracle of the Unicorns. Thought this would be very fitting for the full moon energy. I try to say who it's by Cordelia Francesca Brabs. That's a pretty name, too. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, yeah, so let's see. What can we expect? What what do our viewers here need to know who are watching? Those who are watching this in the collective, what do we need to know around this full moon energy, the end of the month here of May 23rd, and everything else going on at the end of the month here? What do we need to know as a collective? These cards are bulkier, so it's a bit harder to shuffle. <laughs> oh, I know. What do we need to know as a collective? Collective message around this full moon there you go <laughs> it always gives me more than one <laughs> you always get extra messages with me <laughs> so we have polarity look at that mm -hmm. the the divine feminine and masculine like we were talking yep. about polarity yes, is that play. Yes. pluto and you know maybe persephone or however that well, actually that could even be Al altair too with well, the Electra story bed. with um, the Electra story with the Anunnaki Syrian gods, absolutely. Yes, that too, right? Mm -hmm. All about polarity. It says mm -hmm. integrate your shadow side. <laughs> there can be no light without dark. Uh, Understand the law of polarity. Yeah, that's perfect. That is. Perfect. That was a perfect card. It absolutely. is so true. You you cannot have 
you cannot have light without dark, you know, yeah. it, that's the truth, you know? So, and we kind of yes. talked about that in our last video. I mentioned um, our shadow self as, yes. as Jung, the psychologist talks about, we have our shadow side. So yes. you have to learn to, you know, face your shadow and mm -hmm. work with it. You know, the, you don't have to let it control you by any means, but you have to learn to work with it. And yeah, Absolutely. polarity That's is there. And then this card also came out. We have passion, Ooh, fiery okay. passion, just like that phoenix rising from the ashes. Like we mm -hmm. talked about in our last video with Altair, do what excites you. Get fired up about your life. Increase your energy levels. Mm -hmm. so some of you may be feeling more motivated with your uh, business ideas or just anything that excites you. You might be feeling more motivated around this full moon. Absolutely. Yeah, so find find your passions. Focus yes. on your passions here. Don't get too good. caught up in the in the shadow work too. <laughs> so do what <laughs> excites you too. <laughs> I love it. So there it was, your oracle message. And yeah, I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Uh, please feel free to watch this back again too. Um, and if this resonated for you please like this video and comment down below. We do love to see your feedback or any questions that you may have. We'd be happy to help answer. And of yeah. course, please uh, subscribe to see more future videos on here. And if they'd like a, a reading from either one of us, um, we can do readings and reports um, where we could do it specifically for you and yes. give exactly the information you need most. We can do short reports with just one question, like what is the best choice for my career? Or we could zero in on one area or we could do a full out natal report. Yeah, pre we pretty much cover everything, don't we? Yeah. Yes, yes, very <laughs> thorough. We can go, you know, little detail to the whole thing, past lives and all of that. So <laughs> yes, we cover it all here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you all for joining us and uh, please stay tuned for our next video and we will see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye. Ciao. <laughs>